Hey everyone, this will be a new and unexpected experience for most of you, but I do hope you'll enjoy it. This is the video on demand of my very first Twitch stream, covering the Winter of 83 project, edited to remove dead air and extra unnecessary things. Originally, I had planned to keep it as a Twitch event only, but halfway through, the stream really turned out to be more of a live Nightmind video than I anticipated, and by the end, I felt very positive about the concept of putting this out on the channel. While my thoughts are unscripted, I did take every opportunity that came to me to express what I was thinking, what I was feeling, what I was seeing, and the creator, Lewis, aka Linkara, yes, from atop the fourth wall, stopped in around the half hour mark to provide live commentary in the chat, answer our questions, and receive my feedback on the work. You'll notice the Twitch staple of seeing the chat on the screen is missing here, but that's only because it was my first night, and I've since gotten that all set up. I plan to incorporate a lot of live Nightmind video streams going forward for content I'm not quite sure about putting here on the main channel, but if, by the end of a stream, I realize the content itself does compare to my standard production in terms of depth, even if not in formatting, I'll be uploading it here as on-air coverage, like I've done with Winter of 83. If you enjoy this, you can catch me live on Twitch over at Nick underscore Nocturne, and I'll be spending the last few nights of February there starting this weekend, trying to finish our playthrough of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines from last year's Kevin Fever Dream season. I'll be making announcements about when I go live on the community tab here on YouTube and on Twitter, and soon enough, I'll have a schedule, with the kind of variety I want for streaming, including, as said prior, live Nightmind explorations. Hope to see you there, and please, enjoy Winter of 83. All right, we've got some people excited about this. Some people do recognize it. Others have no idea what the hell this is. And Jetstar said, oh my god, this has been on my watch list for weeks. This is perfect. Perfect. Okay. Yes, this is Linkara's project. For those who do not know Linkara, let me give you a very, very quick primer. So, in the old, old days of YouTube... We're talking in the infancy of the website, like the first four years or so. There were a whole fleet of people trying it and populating the website and being bold enough to get on camera and make a whole bunch of different things, review formats, riffing formats of all sorts, all types, basically doing the James Rolfe thing, the angry video game nerd, but in all sorts of different flavors and subjects. Linkara was the first, I believe, or at least the biggest first, to arrive on the scene in the field of comic books and graphic novels. Linkara is, as my friend Riser from the Webcomic Relief put it so well, an elder statesman of YouTube, who was one of the early pickups for Channel Awesome, and hung in there through years and years of Channel Awesome. Linkara is actually even still going today, doing comic book stuff, doing graphic novel stuff, doing some other things as well, and this is one of those other things. Last year, on April 1st, Linkara decided to drop a whole analog horror series out of nowhere <laughs> on April Fool's Day of all things, and people kind of flipped for it. I got a lot of suggestions about it, I got a lot of recommendations. And at the time I was doing Cabin Fever Dream stuff, I couldn't change gears from what I was doing and just pick up something brand new that just dropped out of nowhere like that, um, especially without checking it out first. And by the time I was able to catch my breath and take a look at it, I realized, okay, uh, winter of 83, that's... Uh, yeah, it's not quite winter yet, and then by the time this past winter rolled around, I was exhausted, and I had things to take care of. So I realized, after checking out the first video, you know what? This is going to be a January project. And, after taking a look at it, I realized it, it may not be perfect for the channel of Nightmind proper on YouTube, but I still want to do something with it which is why we are all here tonight. We're going to sit down and we're going to watch Winter of 83 in full together. And it's going to be like a live Nightmind video because no, I am not going to hold back. I cannot. And I will go ahead and stop and give commentary and try and piece things together. Applejack, thank you for rating. Thank you for hopping in. 
What Lenkar decided to do after April 1st was put together all of the parts in kind of a movie run. So it's about an hour, 8 minutes, 16 seconds. And as you expect, we're going to watch it all. And there's the pieces down here. So, remember, like I said, I will not pull punches. <laughs> I will give my critique. This is a Nightmind video. It's just live. Ready? And... We're off. In January of 1983, 40 years ago, this happened. The time is now 12 a.m. K83FC now concludes its programming schedule. Channel 83 will resume its broadcast at 7 a.m. Thank you for watching K83FC. Channel 83. K83FC is owned and operated by the Spencer Sheridan Foundation, providing quality local television to Fawn Circle and neighboring cities in Redwood County, Minnesota since 1975. Our offices are located at 2713 Pinewood Street in Fawn Circle, Minnesota, postal code 56283. K83FC is empowered to transmit by the Federal Communications Commission, Washington, D.C. We hope you've enjoyed today's programming and that you'll join us again in the morning. So right off the bat, what I want to say is that when this opened, I thought that this was one of the most robust presentations that I've seen in analog horror. This is deeply convincing. The graphics are great. The deterioration is great. It looks like it was from 1983 and it was one of those paid for graphics that was put together. Okay, interjection point. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm going to take Kazi Armada's note from this is, uh, well, they tried. Here's the thing. Um, the broadcast interruption idea there is an excellent idea. Um, with the right execution, it could and would be fantastic. I think that the secondary actor was not necessary for that. Um, and if it had been far more garbled of a single uh, of a signal interruption, it would have probably worked better. You know, something that's just barely getting through. Mostly audio that's kind of being chewed up and barely any visuals. Just enough for us to get the idea of somebody trying to be on a camera at the same time that something is happening. And we could later hear about that mystery in development in bits and pieces. Um, yes, it looked far too modern. Far too modern. Everything was really excellent up to that point. Uh, by the way, um, for those who have listened to 
MCR's Danger Days, The True Lives of the Fabulous Killjoys way too many times. Can you also not listen to that exact uh, version of the anthem without hearing the explosive audio at the end in your mind? <laughs> All of a sudden, I just expect it to just blow out the speakers. <laughs> but anyway, so... Things were excellent up until that moment. Uh, Good on paper, not fantastic in execution. So let's see how it picks up. Okay, recording now. Are you sure? I don't want it to be like last week where the cameraman forgot to turn the mic on and we recorded an interview for half an hour before they noticed. I'm positive. I'm seeing levels and readings here. Okay, but just leave the lens cap on until we get there. I'm pretty sure I smudged my lipstick and I want to fix it before we get anything. I'm telling you, it's fine. Let me be the judge of that. Still, while we're recording the audio, might as well get some background first. Sheriff Douglas, how are you today? Oh, not so bad, you? I'm fine. So, tell me a little bit about Scott's Manor. Well, Scott's Manor used to be the mayor's mansion back in the 60s, with the last occupant being Richard Scott. The place was closed for renovations in, oh, I think 68 or so. Then the city had a big budget crisis back then and they decided to hold off on the renovations for a year. The year became two years, then five, then ten, and well, here we are. Last September, some people from the U of M Science Department decided to rent it out to finally complete the renovations, while also using the space for some science experiment or whatnot. And the story about the manor being haunted. Well, before the research people moved in, we got the occasional call about seeing something weird or about kids breaking in and spray painting their gang tags or whatever. But we didn't really pay any mind to it. With the manor being closer to the farmlands, it's not like it was really bothering anyone. It is weird that the mayor's mansion was like 20 minutes away from the town. Well, that's one of the reasons why the renovations kept getting postponed. There was a whole kerfluffle, new laws got passed, the mayor actually had to live closer to the center of town after that. And why are we going out to the manor today? Oh, hey now, you know the reasons even better than we do. Yes, the signal hijacking. Look, I like you guys over at the Channel 83. Galaxy Detective is a fun little show I can watch with my kids, but it feels like these hijackings are happening daily now. That's not... that's not entirely true. We had a week or two before the last one. There's not much we can do about it, sadly. Transmitter's not that strong. The reason the call sign for the station has SC in it is because Fawn Circle is really the only town that gets the broadcast, so the station owner just figured to, you know, lean into it. And that means anyone with a stronger transmitter on the frequency can take over. And I wouldn't put it past some of those U of M kids being responsible. Well, we can certainly look into it when we get there. If it is then, then maybe you guys can get back to normal. For as long as it lasts. Greg! It's true! Well, hang on a sec. What do you mean by that? Ah. <sighs> The station's not doing so well. Problem with a station that barely reaches anybody? Maybe, Chaska, on a good day, is that nobody watches it. And the thing is, even if somehow the station does get a better transmitter and it can reach more people, it likely will be shut down this year anyway. We don't know that. There's a rumor going around that the FCC is going to reassign a bunch of TV frequencies, particularly the high ones, to emergency services and all. Sticky little UHF stations like ours aren't going to cut it anymore and we'll have to shut down. Oh, sorry to hear that. Well, until it actually happens, I'm not admitting defeat. I haven't put five years into K83 just to see it go out like disco. Well, you can get to it right now. We're coming up on the manor. Okay, Greg, switch it off and get it ready for... Uh, hmm. Okay, uh... Once again, I think I think you guys are, are kind of where I am about this. So the modern headshots are way too obvious. Yeah, there's you could have dirtied those up significantly. Um, we have we have certain series where photographs have been shown to represent characters while talking, where they necessarily haven't been as aged as they could be for the look, but this is, uh, this one's super obvious. Um, I don't hate the format here, uh, in terms of being a voice guy, and especially a voice guy who has been trying to branch out 
lately, I, I'm just really feeling the, mm, I'm, I'm feeling all the pins and needles of everything that I would give for notes in the voice performing. I don't overall hate it. It's, it's acceptable. It's passable. You know, it's not, it's not terrible. Um, it sure gives us some exposition dumping, right? <laughs> uh, mm. Well, we know things now. We know that the station's not doing great. Um, the mansion... Why do I keep trying to think of it as Spencer Mansion? <laughs> I keep thinking of it as the Spencer Mansion. It's probably something like that anyway. But that's where they're headed. Um, people have been breaking in. And uh, there have been multiple uh, broadcast hijackings. So let's see how this how this goes on. It was actually all uploaded at once. Um, so no, it's. It was planned to be a, a full day Hello? kind of release. Is anyone home? Dr. Chandra? Hello? Jesus, I thought they were renovating this place. It looks like it hasn't been touched in decades. Greg, get some B-roll shots while I fix my makeup, please. Already on it. I'm not sure what's going on myself. This place was not looking like this last week. Well, the snow obviously got in. Yeah, but it looks like it got in everywhere. The place still had intact doors and windows. They had finished that back in November. You'd have to break the whole damn house to make a mess like this. Dr. Meredith! Steven! Dr. Chandra! It's like a blizzard ran through the whole place. It was maybe half an inch of snow last week. What the hell happened here? Maybe the signal hijacking was. I'm kidding. Don't get started. However, Rhonda! Yeah, Chris? Radio the station, get some more bodies out here to help search. And call Mercy General and tell them to have an ambulance on standby in case we need it. I'm gonna go check upstairs. Alright, back in a minute. I'll come with you. Greg, keep getting those shots and yell if you find anything. Got it. Okay, question for you. What, let, you know what, let me, let me wind it back, let me wind it back. Get some more bodies out. Rhonda! Yeah, Chris? Radio the station, get some more bodies out here to help search. And call Mercy General and tell them to have an ambulance on standby in case we need it. Do you understand yet why why I jumped in just now? Did you catch the critique before I say it? The video just kept playing while the audio was completely uninterrupted. In a situation like this with this crew are they really going to have completely separate audio and video i don't think they would so why did the audio just continue to play completely uninterrupted while the video screwed up yeah and i think somebody else mentioned it the static camera that moves if this was a situation like this i don't think that they would set up a tripod and do a pan of the area, nice and smooth. This looks like footage that had to be picked up, or it's very convincingly made through Blender, but it's not shaky enough to convince me. Yeah, maybe maybe they had mics, but I'm just, I'm thinking, I don't think that they would have kept the audio separate from video. Uh, maybe they did, and they paired it together here. Uh, obviously, we're watching something that's that's kind of analog horror mixed with movie storytelling, so you don't exactly need to play by the rules here. But I'm just thinking for for the conceit of what we're being given, it just did not work. I'm gonna go check upstairs. All right, back in a minute. I'll come with you. Greg, keep getting those shots and yell if you find anything. Got it.
I will say that I do love um, how unique it is to get footage like this in a totally snowed in location. We see a lot of urban exploration shots in Unfiction and web series projects and things like it, but not much where you can see the full effects of winter have ravaged the place. I just think that's, I think that's points, you know. Hey, Viv! Sheriff, I think I found the basement! Viv! Okay, that was cool, actually. <laughs> it seemed like, what, he, he opened the door and then all of a sudden just a full blizzard kind of came in as if there was a storm from another dimension? <laughs> I do enjoy that. Yeah, the blizzard is coming from the basement. That is fun. That's a fun touch. I'm, I'm, I'm about that. All right, let's keep going here. Calling this meeting of the Fawn Circle City Council for January 4th, 1983 to order. Roll call. Thank you, Eric. It's a practice to begin by reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the chambers of the Fawn Circle City Council. We have a lot of business to go over today, so I suppose we should just get right to it. The most urgent matter, of course, is the blizzard that's going to hit our fine little city and the rest of the western part of the state. The current weather forecast says we'll have heavy snowfall tonight, a lull in the storm in the afternoon tomorrow for a couple hours, but then we're going to get hit with another 10 inches of snow. Now, we've put in a request to Minneapolis to send us some additional snow plows, but they haven't gotten back to us yet. In case they don't send them, let's get the word out to people to stay calm and not start hoarding food from the supermarket shelves. We'll have it all cleared away in a day or two afterward. Uh, Councilman Brilling, you said you had something you wanted to bring up with this? Mr. Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to consider purchasing at least two new snow plows. Obviously, we won't be able to use them for this blizzard, but the current plows are 15 years old and starting to get a bit sluggish. In fact, I suspect that day or two you mentioned may be more like three days, given how they operated on the storm a few weeks ago. Several businesses along Mendota Street said they lost some potential Christmas business because of it. Okay, so um, <laughs> I've seen better dub jobs in in kung fu movies. <laughs> I, I'm not. I know. I know. I know. There are only certain things you can do with footage like this. That there's only certain things you can do. I know it's tough. I know it's tough, but <laughs> whoo. When you could just see the character that is supposed to be talking completely with their mouth shut and the voice keeps going, you know, <laughs> and then on top of that, again, I, I'm just, I'm a voice guy. I need to call it out when I hear it. This is supposed to be a city council meeting with all these, like the youngest person in this room, probably 41 or something people you know and i'm not hearing the no oh, well they uh, uh well you know we we need some snow plows that i i believe after last winter it was the accumulation sir was more than we expected and the, the taxpayers have have trusted us to stay on top of that you know you're you're not hearing the age you're not hearing the hesitation it doesn't sound like the scenario at all it doesn't sound like it and that that frustrates me that frustrates me personally yes it's very obviously scripted far too much and it's not even syncing up to the mouths i mean at least when you at least people who are dubbing things even if they're amateurs <laughs> and 
Michael feels so old attack. Michael, you know we love you, though. <laughs> but you know exactly what I mean. You know exactly what I mean. Is that um, the dubbing could have been so much better. I'm, I'm speaking to your voice acting soul. Yeah, because mine is crying <laughs> watching this. Um, I applaud getting old footage like this and managing to edit in the names, but the the audio attempt was not as robust. You know? Do we have a second for that motion? Second. All right, Councilman Berling, please put together a full proposal along with a recommendation for where to buy them from, and we'll vote on it next week. Will do. Next on the agenda, a representative from the U of M campus was going to discuss the restoration work at Scott's Manor and potentially request for funding and labor with the project. Is the representative present? Alrighty, if the representative comes in later during the meetings, let them know they can approach the podium and we'll return to them. Next, a representative from K83FC wanted to speak to us. You know what? I actually like that. That was a nice touch. That was a little bit spooky. They are with us now. That was, that was a little bit spooky. That wasn't too bad. The lower third, yeah, it was cool. Hello, Mr. Mayor, Councilman. My name is uh, Darren Frederick. I'm the general manager of K83FC. I handle budget decisions, overall programming choices, and several other duties there. For several years now. And you blew it. <laughs> okay. Let's. What it? What did they do? What did they do, chat? Why did I say they blew it? <laughs> they doubled down immediately. Okay, they doubled down immediately. You gave us a little bit of a... Ooh, that was strange. And then, not even a minute is by before we get hit with an even more... I am watching kind of level of lower third. We feast upon his work. We could have gone without that and just lived in the uh, the eeriness of what had just come before, uh, you know? If that would have flickered so we barely saw the message, I'd accept it, Kazi Armada said. But this let it linger on screen is no, just no. Yeah, yeah, honestly, that is the great workaround for it. If you absolutely need to have this kind of inclusion, you could have made it sly. You could have made it something where it's so quick that um, you have to go back and catch it and it feels better. Uh, but just lingering there is a little too much on the head and way too fast after the previous one. Now we have been privileged to operate the station, known most around here as Channel 83, out of Fawn Circle. We've tried to provide a lot of entertaining programs to the citizens of this city as well as providing many jobs to locals. Anywhere from electricians to actors and our original programming to just simple janitors, we're part of this community. Indeed, this very city council meeting is being broadcast for people to watch from home so more people can be involved in decisions involving our fair city. However, things have not been going well for the station as of late. Syndication packages for programming are becoming more expensive. We have competition as more and more people embrace cable television and advertisers are not as interested in investing in ad space. What I'm here to request from you today is a stimulus into this part of the community. Some additional funds to help us through this rough patch as we adapt to changing standards in our industry. Let me stop you for a second there. Mr. Frederick, how much are you asking for exactly? Uh, $75,000 over the next three months. Come to order. And let me interject too. I actually dug that. Um, that audio work there was superb. Seriously, they, like, let's go back. Listen to how that rolls out. 
rough patches, we adapt to changing standards in our industry. Let me stop you for a second there. Mr. Frederick, how much are you asking for exactly? Uh, $75,000 over the next three months. Come to order. That was good. <laughs> that was some good work. Uh, just the way that the crowd noise rolled up like that and swelled up, that bit of echo on it, the gavel, that wasn't bad. But yes, the voice with the one dude is jarring, Graffy. See, I, I'm key, and I wanted to say, watching this, that the visual work for the distortion and the degradation is quite superb. There are elements of this that are working very, very well. It's the performance aspects so far that are really lagging behind. And I'd say the dedication to making sure that they fit with the scenario. Let's keep going, though. Technicals are doing most of the heavy lifting here. Mr. Frederick, we are not Minneapolis. Hell, we're not even Wilmar. That kind of money for one struggling business is not acceptable. I know it's a lot, but we give back to the community in a lot of ways. With all due respect, Mr. Frederick, I disagree with some of your assertions. You claim to be contributing to the community with your programming, but my family watches Channel 83. Most of what you show there is stuff found in syndication that you can find elsewhere. We've, uh, we, we've had to take on syndicated programming due to budgeting issues for original shows. Frankly, those original shows leave a lot to be desired. They're cheap. Mr. Fredrickson, I'm sorry, but uh, my family and I, we watch your channel, and uh, you ain't shit, buddy. <laughs> Damn! That dude is cold! <laughs> You've got, what, the mayor here telling you that you aren't shit? <laughs> Woo! Oh, <laughs> man at the podium at that reply. Yes, race freak, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Mayor Daniels throwing hands. <laughs> Looking, the educational content for kids has been, well, wrong a lot of the time. And frankly, I know several local actors who refuse to work for you because they're embarrassed to be a part of such terrible shows. Holy shit! <laughs> This man is reading him for filth! No remorse! Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, I know that town council meetings can get kind of crazy, but... Oh my god, AC Chagall said, Man said L plus ratio plus your station is ass. <laughs> and just add plus your mother to that. <laughs> Woo! Oh, man. <laughs> We've had to cut corners, and the stimulus could have And been. most especially, Mr. Frederick, even if we thought the programming was worth investing in, your station's transmitter is very low power, and as a result, you've had several signal hijackings of late, some of it pretty disturbing and not at all appropriate for the children of this community. We have been investigating the hijacking, sir. And it should be noted, they always occurred late at night when kids should have been tucked into bed. Regardless, you want us to invest a not-so-insignificant amount of money into a business like yours that is not exactly proving itself to be worthy of such an investment. Would you be open to negotiating the investment, at least hearing us out further about this? <sighs> All right, I'm not unreasonable. Make your case and we'll discuss it. We can start Excuse with- Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I've just been informed that there have been some developments at Scott's Manor and Sheriff Douglas needs to speak with you immediately. My apologies, Mr. Frederick and everyone gathered today. It seems to me to cut this meeting short. Mr. Frederick, we're holding another city council meeting on the 6th. We'll discuss your request again at that time. Of course. This meeting is now adjourned. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to agree with Crystal here. <sighs> I care so much more <clears throat> about the council room drama of Mr. Frederick's fighting for the station's life than whatever is happening at Scott's Manor. Um, and also, why 
why would things just be adjourned like this? Uh, unless the sheriff has some really serious I need you now kind of intel, which I suppose it could be the case. And yeah, some of, yes, I know it's supposed to be schlock. All analog horror is <laughs> effectively schlock if you think about it. It just, there's different degrees of quality and ability to make schlock work. When the schlock comes from I could have tried here more, but I just clearly didn't. Whereas I'm putting in the effort and I'm winking at you, it's different. Can we just get more city council drama? I know, right? <laughs> but okay, we'll go to Scott's Manor. We'll go to the Spencer Spencer Mansion and see what's happening. Excuse me, Darcy Milbanks? Yes. I'm Carl Denby, the private investigator you contacted. You wanted to speak to me about your brother? Yes, uh, thank you for coming. I'll be with you in just a moment. I just need to shut down the camera feed and, and the audio recording, and I'll be right with you. Alrighty. When you're ready, I do have a few things I can go over already. Immediate criticism off of what was just said at the end of that. Um, two things. First, if she contacted a private eye, and she knows the name of the private eye, all he would have needed to do was say his name. And we could have guessed from the rest of the discussion that it was about an investigator that she was talking to regarding a missing person. And, and she could have just said, let me turn all of this off. And we could have understood, you know. Yeah, too much exposition. Again, the, the technicals are really doing great here. Oh, Linkar is here. <laughs> hey, Linkar. Hey, Lewis. So, you're in the lion's den. You're in the lion's den. Well, you're in the cat's den. Who, who am I kidding? I'm not a lion. I'd never, I'd never grow my my stuff out that long. But, um, yes, welcome. We are treating ourselves to the movie, and I'm about to watch the segment late night movie. So, on with the show. You're watching K83FC. Coming up next, it's the Tuesday Night Movie, the 1951 science fiction classic, The Thing from Another World. After that, Johnson Hughes investigates crimes across the universe in a double showing of Galaxy Detective. And finally at midnight, K83FC will be signing off for the day. Stay tuned for more of the best local TV this side of the Mississippi. Alan, I love you. And I love this chance you're giving me. <laughs> the air is just so much more crisp around this time, you know? <laughs> Speaking of crisp, I love the sound of crunching snow beneath my feet. It's fun. I'm serious, Alan. I absolutely love living where it's so cold. <laughs> I know, I know. You'd rather be spending winters in Texas or Hawaii or something so you don't have to deal with the snow and the ice and the freezing. <sighs> but the air just seems so much fresher in winter. I love the tingles of a good shiver and seeing how empty everything is after a fresh snowfall. It's breathtaking. I guess what I'm saying is that I'm glad you've let me be the one to capture all this for your B-roll, Alan. Since I know you're just going to remove this audio later when you cut together the footage, I just want you to know that my answer is yes. <laughs> I want to spend the rest of my life with you and share in all the... Wait. Wait, what... what is that over there? Hey, Alan? It looks like the area has been roped off because of a pond or lake or something, but... I was here last week while you were visiting your parents. There's nothing here to rope off. What the hell? <laughs> Alan, this area was closed off for me to film this. No one should be in the park right now, and it snowed last night. But... 
there are footprints. Who was? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. The wind was just. Yeah. I know I was just talking about how I love the cold, but. Jesus. It felt like the wind chill was 80 below or something. I'm wearing gloves, but my fingers felt numb for a second there. I. Uh, look, I think I'm gonna go back to the car and warm up, but I want to see where these footprints lead. What the hell? Wait. Alan, I'm glad I'm empty. Alan, I love the chill. It's so cold. I'm numb. Spend the rest of your life in winter. I'm so cold. Shiver in all the empty. Share in all the empty. I'm so cold. I'm so cold. I'm so cold. I'm so cold. Okay, so that was the best segment so far. Honestly, yeah, uh, that was genuinely the best segment so far. Um, this is... So, one side of the coin, other side of the coin. One side of the coin, yes, the voice performance could have been better for the scenario. However, it was good for schlock level and scripted level as this was happening that worked for me that worked for me um and again there's something about the environmental audio that was done and has been done so far in the series that is really nailing things because the crunching the movement being outside you heard it 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 sounded good. It genuinely sounded good. Her audio could have done with a bit more beating up. It was still too clean for my liking. But the environmental audio worked superbly. Um, the footage really worked. When it came to the shot of the hand, here we go. This is not terrible, but it would have worked better if it were a more organic angle where the camera had fallen. If we could still see what was going on, but it wasn't so dead on center, then it would have worked better. Still, this kind of dead on shot with the action does harken back more to schlock, but not unenjoyable. This is working for me. And I actually really enjoyed the snowman. And I enjoyed the way that things ended. The audio disruption that's kind of delivering the message. If this was the first time that we really got strong, creepy messages, that would have worked better. The lower thirds just beating us over the head in the council meeting absolutely sucks in comparison to this delivery at the end which is it's effective shiver and all the empty 
Had difficulty trying to get the camera to stand up the right way, but I definitely didn't want it exactly on center. I gotcha. Yeah. Technical difficulties will always bite you when you know exactly what it is that you want and you just can't get it. So you have to kind of make what works for it. It is understandable. It wasn't super exactly centered, I notice. It's just still a little too centered for my liking. But it works. Sharing all the empty. I'm so cold. I'm so cold. I'm so cold. I'm so cold. Yeah, <laughs> I, I genuinely enjoy that. I genuinely enjoy that. This feels on the mark. Again, there's just, there's that voice guy in me that is just like, ooh, the environmental audio worked so well. The degradation effects in certain areas worked so well. If there was just more time invested in trying to beat up the voice, then it could have meshed so much better. You know? That's the only thing that keeps coming to me, is the actual scripted voice work. If there was more beating around with it, if you kicked it around a little bit more. But that takes a lot of experimentation, and sometimes it takes the audio editor that you have. But, yeah, you know what? Definitely big improvement. Big, big thumbs up. Late Night Movie as a segment is working better than everything else in here so far, except for the sheer hilarity of Mr. Fredericks getting his ass beat in the council meeting. <laughs> so, Linkar is saying, when it comes to the outright more horror parts, I was constantly paranoid about if it was actually scary or if I was trying too hard. So really happy you enjoyed this part. Always remember... Lewis, less is more. Your first, and, and this is for everybody, the first instinct that you have is you're going to take your passion and your need to deliver an emotion and drive it up the flagpole. You're going to think, oh, if I don't do this just right by adding these pieces, it's not going to be effective. In horror, it's kind of the reverse of an action movie. When you take it back more, it works better. And then there are certain moments where you can just kind of drag the lever all the way down or put the gas all the way down, but we need to get there. However, the end of late night movie, it works. It's effective. I feel it and I believe it more than I would the stuff with the lower thirds in council meeting. So... She's an alternate now. <laughs> no, no. Don't 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 go in here insulting this man saying it's that reductive. <laughs> I've seen reductive crap when it comes to ripping off Mandela. This is not that. Alright? Onwards. <laughs> interview for reference January 5th 1983 discussion with client Darcy Milbanks on the subject of her missing brother Stephen Milbanks this interview is being conducted for a second time the original interview tape conducted on January 4th has somehow been corrupted and is now unlistenable why is it so important to go over this again don't you remember what I said yesterday there is always the possibility that something you say could provide a helpful clue that I need to refer back to it could be something I didn't catch the first time we talked. I know what you're saying to me won't be exactly what you said yesterday, but please try to repeat all the information you mentioned the last time we did this, Miss Milbanks. Okay, I'll try. Um, my name is Darcy Milbanks, and I'm a videographer in Fawn Circle. I mostly do work for City Hall, recording important meetings and putting together local PSAs and stuff. And why do you require the services of a private detective like me? My brother, Stephen, was hired recently to do renovations at Scott's Manor. Stephen's... Well, he's not a bum, exactly, but he hasn't been good at keeping a job. Gets too lazy and prefers to just hang out with his girlfriend, Stephanie. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny. I, I wonder if that's why he got together with her. The similar names and all made it easier for him. Please continue. Right, sorry. Um, 
Anyway, while he's not good at keeping a job as an usher at the Cineplex, he did graduate from college last year with a degree in carpentry, so this was his chance to finally get some decent paying work for his field. He's been doing it the last few months, but several days ago he went to work and, and then he just didn't come home. No one has seen him or his girlfriend since then. I tried to talk to the cops, but they just think he and Stephanie eloped. They had talked about it before, but I haven't been able to find her either. And why don't you believe they'd do this? Stephen may not like doing work, but he's always known that he needed to do it. Our parents both died when we were teenagers, Stephen at 17. He was close enough to adulthood that he was given custody of me and he was declared a legal adult. Since then, while he's had a tough time keeping a job, he's always made sure to get one so he could pay the bills. He would not have just up and left without a single word. And even then, he would have contacted me by now to let me know he was okay and what was going on. Have you made any attempt to contact anyone working at Scott's Manor to see if they could shed some light on things? <sighs> they don't have a working phone up there yet, so I've had to go in person. I went twice to see if anybody knew anything, but no luck. They say he came into work one day, did his shift, and they never saw him again. And it is here, Ms. Milbanks, that I must update you with new information that I discovered since our conversation yesterday. W you found something? Yes. Sort of. What do you mean? I believe I found your brother's car. It matched the description you gave me, but the license plates were missing. Where? And you didn't find him? Easy, Darcy. Easy. I was on my way to Scott's Manor yesterday to interview them myself when I came across the car along the side of a country road. It had been abandoned, but I didn't find any footprints leading anywhere. Just a lot of snow on the tires. Probably from that storm the other day. There was a half-eaten bag of chips in it, but nothing else to indicate who it belonged to. Why haven't you reported this to the cops yet? That's the thing, Darcy. I did. Or at least I tried to. I drove to the police station and reported, but there was nobody there. No receptionist, no cops, most of their cars were gone. I waited for an hour for someone to show up, but nobody did. What the hell are we supposed to do now, then? I want you to keep trying to get in touch with the cops. Give them my number. I don't know. Maybe everyone's just busy with the storm. I'm going to try to head to Scott's Manor today to see what I can find out. Though I admit that may not be possible if the road's not... <laughs> Is it recording again now? Yeah, it's the same thing that happened to our original interview. Must be something wrong with the tape recorder. Anyway, we're gonna get to the bottom of this. Don't worry. God, I hope so. Drive careful out there. Okay. So, <clears throat> this is fun for me. Because now I get to illustrate a point that is so extremely important in horror storytelling. If you want to scare somebody, if you want to disturb them, the first thing you need to do is sucker them into the reality that you are presenting. You need to get them immersed in the scenario, make them comfortable, make them feel like they are part of something, that things are normal, and then you hit them. Then you hit them with something. Because now that they're already believing in your reality, now that they're already nestled, they're snug in the bed of the world that you've presented, it is so much easier for them to accept something strange that happens and to feel the effect of it, which is precisely what we just witnessed. This entire audio interview went completely uninterrupted. It was just a pure audio play that we started listening to and we were believing it, we were following along, and then all of a sudden, something changed. It got spooky, the audio got corrupted, and when they came back, they acknowledged it. That works. This is how it's done. This is how it's done. That was the best short example I could ever possibly give you in the simplest way of how you do it now when it comes to the voice acting a lot of you are saying that this is significantly better and it is it is significantly better linkara said i got a lot of my voice actor friends for this carl in particular is played by mark swing who's done several anime and you know what i absolutely believe it 
I absolutely believe it. He is stronger here than the actress for Darcy. That is not an insult for Darcy. That is just what I'm noticing here is who am I feeling is more in tune with the with the role and the situation. Both of them are on the same page, though, of it kind of being schlocky and audio play sort of thing. You know, I can I can hear it. It's not being played so much for hardcore authenticity as it is for being script work. But I still like them both. I still like them both. And again, it just, yeah, Grave Mindset, Darcy's just a little stilted. There's just enough, yeah, gotcha, Sasha, I think you're right, melodrama. There's just enough of being off the level that Carl is on that it kind of just, in my mind, it's like, mm, it's like A versus B here in terms of letter grading. At times a B plus for Darcy's actress, but it's still, it's still working. It's still working. And yes, the effect at the end, right on. For direction, it could have been a little bit better. When it comes to the directing, there could have been more pausing. Even in the editing, some effects could have been added in in terms of just spacing things out or maybe leaving in small breath noises. You know, of somebody just kind of catching their breath or breathing out loud as they're thinking out loud. But overall, solid. Solid. Here's what's coming up tonight on K83FC. Coming up next is The Animators of Evil, a panel discussion about the apparent prevalence of Satanism in cartoons. Followed at 7 by Space 1999. At 8 o'clock, yuck it up with the Three Stooges. And at 8.30, Barnaby Jones. Stay tuned for more of the best local TV this side of the Mississippi. It's a it was the Satanists in your cartoons that gave you so many furries, by the way. <laughs> New year, and that means no savings at Sid's Electronics Boutique. We've got huge discounts on brand name electronics. This Panatronic Twin Tape Boombox Stereo is now only $109.95. If you want something more portable, this Panatronic AM FM radio is only $49.95. The Sono 500 home computer is only $199.95. And it even comes with a built-in speech to read off what you wrote. Hello, I'm yet Sid. You heard it. Come on down to Sid's Electronics Boutique just off Highway 59 and Chippewa Road. Okay, that ad was great. None of you can pretend that wasn't solid. <laughs> hey, Sid, here we are at the store. Using your camera to record me, locking up the stores you requested. See? Here's your sign. It's your store. I'm freezing my ass off out here. Just. What, Sid? What is the logic here? You want me to prove I'm not a thief while handing me an expensive camera? Uh, look, I get it, the best suck, but this is ridiculous. I'm standing out here in the freezing cold while a blizzard is going on just to prove I did lock up the store? Then if I took anything, I'm not likely to film myself doing it, am I? I just, just look at all this, nobody's around. Nobody's breaking in to do this at night. You, you know what's going on? Somebody asks us about the damn computers or a TV or something, we're all distracted, and their buddy goes in and steals a car phone. <laughs> you ask any store in the area, it's the same thing. The hell, why not just install some security cameras or something, man? Why go through all these extra efforts with me putting this on tape? Why are you gonna do it? Can you help me with this? Hello? <laughs> Great. I'm hearing things. Look, Sid, you're the best boss I've ever had, but you've got to hire some more people. Hey, can you help me with this? Who's there? Help me with this? Uh, sure, I can't see you. Where are you? Help me with this. Yeah, 
I'm, I'm following your voice, but I can't see you anywhere. It's hard to see through the snow. Thanks for the help, bud. Uh, I've, ne- uh, <laughs> I've never seen such a... <laughs> what a wonderful... What a wonderful kill. Oh my god. As somebody said, the ghost of customers after closing. <laughs> I didn't expect this dude to say thanks for the help after knocking his ass out. <laughs> This, that was awesome. That was hilarious. I love that. <laughs> hey, can you help me with this? <laughs> That's such a silly lure. But just the knockout and then thanks for the help is just the icing on the cake, dude. <laughs> oh, hey, Fred. Hold on, let me take a minute to knight Fred. I might be giving him too much power, but uh, I trust him. (laughs) Hey, indeed. Okay, Lenkara. Share with us your writing process for that. Because there's... You must have known how wonderfully hilarious that was going to be on delivery. Let's just take a minute to see. Meanwhile, a literal clown says, I love you, Night Mind. You've been an important part of my life since like 2016. You've always been my comfort creator. Thank you so much. Okay, Linkara says, yep, a little of both. The unease of being alone at night, but yeah, dark humor of killing him, bonk, thanks. (laughs) Yeah, we can watch it again. Why not? Thanks for the help, bud. (laughs) bud. (laughs) Okay, you know what? When I um when I graduate through Twitch enough to have redeemable sounds, I'm gonna clip that. And, and make that a, a channel point redeemable sound. Linkar, do I have your blessing to do that? <laughs> because I feel that we need that. That is, that's on the same wavelength as damn good margarita. Go right ahead. Okay. All right. It's on record now. As soon as I, as soon as I am able to do that, I'm going to put that as a redeemable. <laughs> Bonk, thanks for the help, bud. <laughs> yeah. And yes, Aiden, hello. Hello, everybody. Maury Dahl, hello. I see all of you. Thanks for coming by. All right, onwards. Let's see what happens to this poor poor SIDS employee.
It's a new year, and that means new savings at Sid's Electronics Boutique. We've got huge discounts on home electronics. This Sono CC300 VHS camera recorder and player is only $699, down from $899 originally. In the market for a new telephone? How about this combination telephone and AM FM clock radio in one? It's only $39.95. Or if you and your kids are stuck inside this winter, how about picking up a TV video sports game 10 for only $89.95? Video games telephones, and cameras. Only the best at Sid's Electronic Boutique, located just off Highway 59 and Chippewa Road. January 6th, 1983. Update on previous recording. Darcy Milbanks failed to make contact with the police yesterday, and I failed to read Scott's Manor due to the snowstorm. As the storm cleared today, I did make it to the police station and made contact with a Deputy Blair, the only person at the station. I was able to tell him the basics of my investigation, but he's preoccupied by the missing police officers. I admit trepidation on that topic myself. However, the missing sheriff and his staff are not my concern at the moment. Darcy, <clears throat> Darcy Milbanks hired me to find her brother, and that's what I intend to do. I'm currently en route to Scott's Manor. Hopefully, someone there will be able to provide me with some new information. January 6th Supplemental. I have arrived at Scott's Manor, and I believe I've discovered what happened to all the police in the city. They're all here. Or at least they were here. There are five, so... Eight police cars and several other nondescript vehicles located outside of Scott's Manor. I've tried calling out to see if anyone's around, but there's been no response. People have been here recently, however. I am inside of Scott's Manor now, which is overrun by snow. There are several footprints in the snow from various individuals. So far, I've been able to find some disturbing items around here. I've located at least two revolvers, both empty. I've found some shredded, bloody clothing, though whether that clothing belonged to a police officer, I can't say. For that matter, it might not belong to anyone, just some oily rags that look like blood. But given the current unusual situation, I am disinclined to believe an innocent explanation. The only area I have yet to explore is the basement. Heading down now, we'll leave recording on while I explore. I am now in the basement. I... This basement is strange. The rest of Scott's Manor is still a decrepit, half-destroyed building, but down here, well, there's certainly damage, but there are metal walls, the lights are on, and it looks like there are offices, doors. The snow has gotten down here too, but this place is like a laboratory or something, and it's in much better shape than what's above. What the hell was this? A bomb shelter? I don't even know what I'm supposed to be looking for down here. What is all this? December 12th. Growth rate of organism increases exponentially in colder temperatures. What were they... the way? Oh my god. These... These are definitely human remains. It's... it's like a skeleton. There's blood everywhere around it. I'm thinking, God, right now, my nose is clogged up a bit from the cold because I do not want to be smelling this. I need to find out what the hell happened here. There. This room appears to be some kind of office. Records, maybe? camera at its storage container. Looks like it's from channel 83. 
What the hell is this doing here? I'll try to turn it on and get some answers. Battery's dead. <sighs> Charging cable and a spare battery. Okay, perfect. I'll take these with me. Hello? And... Hello? Is someone there? Someone, please help me! Hello? I'm coming! Oh, God! Please help me! It's okay, man. It's okay. I'm here. It's... It's so cold. Yeah, I can see that, man. You're looking pretty bad. Can you stand? No, no, my legs are... They're buried in the snow. I can't feel them. Don't worry. I'll carry you up, man. Oh, my God. I... Man, your legs. Oh, God. They're gone, aren't they? Yes. I'm so sorry. I... Yeah, yeah. You have to get out of here. Just leave me. No. No way, man. I'll, I'll, I'll carry you. Please, you have to warn them! Hey, can you help me with this? Hey! Come over here and help me with him, man! I need to get him to my car outside! Come on, man! Help me here! I... Wait, wait a second. You're, you're Stephen Milbanks, aren't you? Your sister hired me to find you. Hey, can you help me with this? How are you talking without your lips moving? Run! Run now! It's not him! No, I got him! What? Get out of here! Warn everyone! They're in the snow! They're in the damn snow! Wow. <laughs> it just got legit. So, I don't know how many of you are, or if it even translated because of the stream. I'm listening with headphones on, straight through YouTube. The moment that Carl came across the basement survivor, I heard 3D spatial audio. I don't know who you had, Lewis, on the audio editing for this, but it is phenomenal. And just the way that all came together, that was top fucking notch. Wow. You really just, at that moment, that sequence jumped a whole letter grade. That was phenomenal. That was actually really good. And just suddenly the inclusion of, can you help me with this? Oh my god. Beautiful. Beautiful. It was actually the scientist from the first part. Uh, in re he says in response to, was that the cameraman or the brother? It seemed like the brother. So it was the scientist. Wow. And whatever the, whatever the threat is, it's in the snow. And it's bacteria-based. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking with other people, it's like, is it is it killer snowman? Is is the punchline killer snowman? But I I welcome it. <laughs> I welcome it. Wow. That was superb audio work. The voice acting, the editing, the timing, the fact that I could hear the distance closed between whoever was laying in the snow and Carl in my ears. Like it was 3D audio. Woo! Wow. Yeah, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Calling this meeting of the Fawn Circle Council for January 6th, 1983 to order. For the sake of brevity, I am waiving the roll call and the Pledge of Allegiance so that we can complete the meeting as soon as possible. Our favorite Before comedy is back, all everybody! members are present. May I have a second council member confirm this? Second. City Clerk, please make a note of it. We all would like to get out of here as soon as possible before the storm hits. As such, I am striking items 7, 9, and 10 from the agenda to instead be discussed at our next meeting on Tuesday, January 11th. 
These would be discussing the funding for repavement of Mendota Street this summer, the report on how the new after-school sports program is proceeding, and the petition to open a Kmart store in the vacancy next to Sid's Electronics Boutique on Chippewa Road. Any opposed to this postponement? And we will discuss these topics on the 11th. Let's move into the agenda. First and foremost, Minneapolis has sadly denied our request for additional snowplows. They want to keep them on hand in case the blizzard turns and hits them, but as soon as the storm is clear, they'll send them out to help with the cleanup. Preparations need to be made to prioritize emergency services to be plowed first, the hospital, the fire station, that sort of thing. We'd like to coordinate with the police on this, but apparently somebody decided not to pay the phone bill because there's still no word from them, unless the representative from the police headquarters would like to speak up. After the conclusion of this meeting, I'm going to head over to the station to find out what's going on with them. If the police aren't here to conduct their duties, we should just move on. Now, I believe Mr. Darren Frederick from Channel 83 wished to address us again and update us about the signal interruptions. Hello, Mr. Mayor, Councilman. I'm Melinda Norvik, the creative director at K83FC. I know Darren was supposed to speak to you today, but he was sadly unavailable. I've been asked to speak on behalf of the station instead. Go ahead, Melinda. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I wanted to take this opportunity to explain to you all why we've been having so many problems with the signal hijackings. For instance, the one that we had with someone seeming to be filming outside of Sid's Electronics Boutique. When we receive material for commercials or shows to be broadcast, it's reviewed by our editors and producers to ensure that it complies with state and federal guidelines for transmission. Now, the signal hijackings occur because, somehow, someone has a transmitter stronger than our own and uses it primarily during late night, since the late shift at the station has so few personnel. Now, after Darren appeared before you, we decided to have several producers on hand to oversee that night, and we've continued to have more personnel on hand to watch what happens and do something about it. If that's the case, Ms. Novak, why was there still a hijacking? Why not just cut the broadcast for a few minutes given it's so late at night? And that's what I was getting to, Councilman. We can't just shut off our broadcast, because they're still broadcasting their transmission at the same frequency. We have to stop it by increasing power on our own, which is more expensive, hence one of the reasons for our stimulus request. And we'll discuss that more in a minute. Please, continue. Well, this is where it gets strange, Mr. Mayor. As I said, we had several producers on hand to observe the hijacking in progress, just in case someone at the station was helping them or anything. When the hijacking occurred, we quickly got to work boosting power enough to override their signal. However, when we reviewed the tape of the material we were supposed to broadcast during that time, we discovered something... odd. Define odd. The transmission the hijackers sent somehow replaced the material on that tape. And before you ask, no, nobody was recording the hijacking on it. The material of the hijacking somehow burned itself into the tape on its own. It sounds to me like you have a practical joker at your station, Ms. Norvik. I'm telling you, council member, there's something strange about all this. I personally was the one who inserted the tape and pulled it out again. Nobody hit record. The tape was just changed somehow. Rather than worrying about ghosts, let's go back to the issue of stimulus funding. Quite frankly, even if we were to consider this, $75,000 over three months is ludicrous. If you want to proceed forward, you'll have to be a little more realistic in your... Please, everyone, remain calm. It seems we might be ending things a little early today if the power is out. What? What is it? The snow! Look! How? How was the snow covering the doors like that? The blizzard only started a few minutes ago. It, it's got to be just on the doors, right? No, we're buried. We're completely buried. Calm down, everyone. Calm down. We'll call 911 for help and try to start digging out of here. Darcy, shut off the equipment and call the police. Right. Okay, so once again, 
Once again, the lesson is understood. You have to sucker people in with the normal, get them used to what's going on, get them invested in a state of reality, and then you hit them. Because that caught me by surprise. The lower thirds, again, are the absolute eye-roll-worthy element of this entire thing. The only time I liked them was when they stopped being lower thirds and became, like, upper thirds all of a sudden blocking people's faces. If the text had not appeared and that just vanished and that was the only weird anomaly, then that would have worked better. It's just that that kind of... <sighs> when you have such blatant text elements like that, it's in the same bucket as God damn binary code messages in somebody's ARG <laughs> from some masked antagonist. It's very eye roll worthy. It's like, oh my god, amateur hour shit. But the rest of it significantly worked better than the first council meeting. I did notice some some people in chat saying that, and I've I wholeheartedly agree. Maybe the distortion covering the faces more, allowing for better dubbing, as I feel, was working out. But that just seemed to work better this time around. And then again, because we were so used to the flow of things, the moment that the lights go out, it's like, oh, oh, something is happening. And then we find out it's the snow. The snow is here. Oh, uh, Lucifer Shroud, it says, I'm going to go to bed. I'm sleepy, but this has been fun. I hope to see you through and more soon. Good night, Nick and chat. Good night. Sleep tight. Thanks for joining. Arcos of Black says, Need, some, need a more comedic ARG to happen and include binary code that just translates to, Why did you translate this? <laughs> so Linkara says, I was really worried about the council meetings, particularly the first one, since most of it was exposition and meant to be dry. The original script actually had the full Pledge of Allegiance and roll call. Realized that was boring and cut it. Yeah, I could tell that there was a cut over what was supposed to be the pledge. But um, thank you for keeping the mayor's verbal beatdown of that poor man who came in from Channel 83. <laughs> Just the absolute council meeting bitch slapping that guy was doing against that poor guy. <laughs> that was hilarious. Oh, but this, what, what a turn of events. This is cool. This is cool. So... The council meeting is now snowed in. The power is out. The forces that are leaking into this world through the basement of um, the Scots place are obviously in control. And Carl's life is on the line. Let's see how it turns out. Jan January 6th supplemental. I, I finally made it back to my office. Unfortunately, it would appear that I will not be leaving again anytime soon. It has been, uh, two hours since I fled Scott's Manor and in what appeared to be Stephen Milbanks. The blizzard hit earlier than anticipated. It must have started while I was exploring the basement and it hit hard. The road had whiteout conditions and I almost slid out of control on at least three occasions. The amount of snow at the office made it difficult to even open the front door, and it's only getting worse. I have not had time to process what happened in the basement of Scott's Manor, and am attempting to do so now. <sighs> once inside, I attempted to call the police once again without any answer. I also attempted to call Darcy Milbanks, but I only got her answering machine. I told her to meet with me or to contact me as soon as possible. Her... her brother is... I don't know what her brother is. But when I punched him, it's not like I was punching a man. He's... he is very likely dead. And I need to tell her that. I'm going to start charging the camera battery and play the tape in it when I can. In the meantime, I've also got these micro cassettes and papers that I took and my spare recorder to listen to them on. Hopefully there's something here that'll help. 
So I said it in chat, but I'm going to say it here. What a line delivery. Mm, I am a sucker for delicious voice acting line delivery. Her brother is... I don't know what her brother is. Mm, yes, chef kiss. Mwah. Delicious. <laughs> Big props on that line delivery and that performance there. Like Lewis, excellent pick on that voice actor for Carl. Excellent pick. He's putting in work. And I'm and yes, as as Michael Anderson said, Final Girl Carl, please. Please, I'm rooting for Carl. Final Girl Carl. September 14th, 1982, Dr. Chandra reporting. Serial number 9X47A, Project Freezing Rain, Entry 2. We've been setting up the lab facilities under Scott's Manor for three days. Dr. Matthews says that he'll have the specimens transferred here within the week, once the primary holding tank has been completed. The life forms that we recovered, well, if you can call them life forms of their size, more like bacteria, really seem to be attracted to crystalline structures. Uh, given that growth rate, we hope to have something to report within the next... December 17th, 1982. Dr. Chandra reporting. Serial number 9X47A. Project Freezing Rain. Entry 39. Finally, I have something of interest to report. I am proud to announce that we have made contact with the life form. The method of contact is, admittedly, a strain on the life form, so we have been unable to maintain conversations for more than a minute or so at a time, but it proves they are intelligent. They've discerned our alphabet and language, though I'd say it's probably at a K1, K2 level at the moment. We were able to wire a personal computer into the incubation chamber and use the text-to-speak functions to hold a conversation. It's amazing. They actually hear me and communicate. This was the first transmission we got from them. Hello, you are Dr. Kendra. We are the... Damn it. There's a branch from a tree outside, scraping against the window. I'll move to a deeper part of the office away from that. Oh god, why? Why didn't I unmute? No! I was about to say... <sighs> I'm so sorry that you had to view that ad, that awful, awful ad with that stupid, stupid mobile game. Anyway, what I was saying was that I'm not familiar with the content of Team Four Star. I know the name. The, the name Kaiser Neko is new to me, but excellent performance, excellent pick. That really did sound like um, a tape that you would pick up in a survival horror game kind of scenario. That was good. That was really good. But yeah, I'm digging this. Plot's thickening. Things are, are really coming through here. I'm enjoying this. I think, yeah, it, this had a really rocky kind of start. But um, now the performances are pulling weight along with the technicals. That's very good. That's very good. We're in the home stretch now with K83FC's late night programming. At 11 p.m., we pay the bills with some paid programming. And at midnight, we close up shop with the end of our broadcast day. Stay tuned for more of the best local TV this side of the Mississippi.
Okay, so I'm a big fan of how that ended. Um, even the copyright was fucked. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. I, I mean, I'm always happier when there's blood. I know. I know. I'm a sucker. Anyway, that, that was pretty well implemented. Um, there were moments of it being laid on just a touch thick. But overall, better implementation of that concept than anything we've seen in the council meetings with the lower thirds. That was fun. Uh, <laughs> what are we offering at this cabin? Blood. <laughs> that was good. Linkar said, as I said further up, this is my favorite segment and the most directly inspired by Gemini Home Entertainment. I still need to actually sit down and watch Gemini. The reason I have it, well, I got analog horror burnout and everybody and their mother kept screaming about Gemini Home Entertainment at some point while everybody and their father were screaming at me about like three other things. No, I didn't watch Gemini and I'll, I'll, I'm going to leave it on a shelf for eight months, all right? <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> Give me a goddamn break, people. I'm an unfiction channel, not an analog horror channel, all right? If I eat too much of one flavor, I'm just going to get sick and throw up. <laughs> and turn Let's Player for three months to detox. Play fucking Fortnite for two weeks straight to, <laughs> to clean up my palate. You don't, want, you, want to, you don't want to see me do that, do you? <laughs> anyway, that was a fun segment. I think I think that really did work a lot better in terms of flipping captions and, and just having spooky text and hard effects. But that ending especially was a great note. That was a great bookend sort of deal that you did there. Let's move on. It sounds like we're in another council meeting. Oh yeah, City Council Meeting 3. I'm not sure how much hilarity we'll get out of this one because as you remember, we left off on a scary note. But, uh, in it we go. Alright everyone, please take your seats. I have some stuff I can tell you now. Good news and bad news, I'm afraid. 
The immediate good news, as you can tell, is that we've got the emergency generator working, so we have heat in the building. That being said, I'm asking you to limit your movement for the time being to this room and the restrooms. We don't know how long we're going to be here, and we need to conserve energy. We have food and supplies for a few days, but hopefully it won't come to that. We've managed to get in touch with Minneapolis and a few other neighboring towns and have informed them of our situation. They're going to try to get out of here as soon as possible, but the blizzard's hitting them just as hard as it's hit us. What about the cops or the city snowplows? Easy there. Our snowplows are in the same predicament, trying to clear paths in order to get to us. They should be able to be in the next few hours, but that brings us to our first bit of bad news. Council Member Billing. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We've been trying to dig our way out of here through one of the back doors, but it's very clear that it doesn't matter where we try to leave. We're not going anywhere. The building and the parking lot are almost completely covered in snow. There's still plenty of ventilation for the building, but... Our cars? I'm sorry. Our cars are completely buried. I'm sorry, but I can't say. It's very possible that they may never run again. Rest assured, we will do everything in our power to help you if your cars were damaged by this storm. Maybe that'll be monetary compensation, maybe some tax relief, I, I don't know. But we'll figure that out later. We're just going to focus on trying to get out of here so we can all go home. Fortunately, Ms. Norvik from Channel 83 has gotten in touch with their station, and help is definitely coming. The station has a snowplow used for clearing out the station parking lot, and it's on its way now. In the meantime, we're still transmitting to them. Only audio to conserve power, and they'll be kept apprised of our situation. I want to thank Channel 83 for this generous help. Rest assured, when this crisis is over, we'll be most grateful, but we can discuss that later. In the meantime, we need to keep ourselves occupied, try to pass the time, and stay warm. We'll be distributing blankets and... Oh my God, Deputy Blair! Give him some room! Give him some room! Blanket on him! He looks like he's frozen! Are you okay? What the hell happened? How did you get in here? <sighs> Window. Managed to get it open. Came down here looking for help. We've been trying to get in touch with the police department for days. Where the hell has everyone been? Where have they been? Where have they been? They're at Scott's fucking manor, where you told them to go! I, that was days ago. They never came back! Their cars are still fucking out there! I found Sheriff Douglas's badge in a snowbank covered in blood! You fucking sent them out there to die! I did I, I, I sent them to investigate it. That's all. I need them to find the scientists after that signal hijacking. The city needs the funds from that operation. You know what was happening out there? Do you know what happened to my brother? If he was out there, then he's dead. They're all dead. You don't know that. Where is he, Mayor? No, I know they're all dead. Do you know why I came here? Because I was chased. There were things out there, things made of snow. They had human faces on them. They chased me until I got here. We need to shut all the doors and windows before they get in. Are you insane? What the hell are you talking about? Those things were in Scott's Manor! They'll be coming in here soon if we don't... Stephen? Stephen, you're alive! No, get away from him! Stephen, oh my god, I'm so happy to see you. Where have you been? I've been so worried. That is not Stephen! What the? Wow. Okay. So I did. I did say in the in the chat. Um, Lewis. Yeah. Strong delivery there. That was. That was an impassioned performance. You believed yourself. That's one of the hardest things for voice actors to get about why a performance is not working is if you don't believe yourself in your delivery and the emotions, then it's not going to come through as authentic. That came through as pretty damn authentic. You believed yourself. You believed yourself. And we could hear it. 
it was there was no restraints there was no kind of wrapping yourself in the words you 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 did it <laughs> just um and and oh snow creatures wearing human faces now that is a visual for you that is some delightfully twisted shit i would love to actually see that that sounds fucked up and i love it <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh man this is getting fun now I mean, it was already it already picked up and was getting interesting. It was redeeming itself in the performative factor, but now it's really. I started this audio play kind of feeling, and it's like whatever. But all of a sudden now it's like okay, I'm actually gonna sit on the couch and listen, <laughs> sort of deal, you know. When you're walking through and, and there's something on the TV, it's like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then suddenly. Suddenly, you feel like, you know what? Let me just stop and watch this. And now you truly do care. <laughs> now now it's really getting at you. Ooh. Oh, this is fun. January. January 7th, I think. It's morning now. I can hear tornado sirens out there, but I think it's quiet enough in here for it to work. After the glass in my office broke, I tried to cover it up as best I could, but there was no way I was staying in there. Fortunately, it looks like the other offices in this building are cleared out. Everyone took a three-day weekend on account of the blizzard. That's going to be hell to clean up. And unfortunately, it looks like the heater's not working as well as it should. It's not freezing like it is outside, but it's not exactly warm either. I lost a bunch of those tapes when the snow blindsided me. I just hope the remaining ones are still useful. I've also still got the camera, so hey, maybe we'll finally get some answers. December 27th, 1982, Dr. Chandra reporting serial number 9X47A, Project Freezing Rain, entry 46. We're back from Christmas, and the skeleton team reported nothing unusual from the life form. It made a few inquiries about where I was, and the team explained about the holiday. What we've been focusing on today is actually an interesting ability that the lifeform has. Manipulation and influence of ultra-high frequency bands, as well as magnetic media. They're attracted to the ultra-high frequency bands in particular, moving towards transmitters that are utilizing it. We think it may be a form of sustenance for them, and in the process of manipulating the field for consumption, they were actually able to alter the transmission to create images. When we tested it with them, they did a rather impressive likeness to my own face. It was in static and, like their initial communications, almost akin to a child's drawing. But it was impressive nonetheless. However, uh, what is somewhat more concerning is their manipulation of magnetic media, like tapes. I lost an entire entry this morning because whatever they were doing to manipulate the transmissions affected a tape that was nearby. It is totally garbled. Hello again, my friends. Uh, could you wait a moment? I'm trying to finish something. We want to know about you. We want to know about your mind and your thoughts and your blood. It is not like us. I know it isn't. We can discuss these things at our scheduled talk at 3 p.m. Very well. As you just overheard, the lifeform's speech has been improving and it has lasted for longer periods of time each time we communicate. Still, I'd like to put in a request for new insulation and barriers around the test area. Dr. Giroux said that the experiments with the UHF frequencies affected the TV in the break room, so they must have incredible range with their abilities. I'd also like to start having my reports transcribed in case they accidentally damage more tape recordings. Hey, can you help me with this? Ah, yes, Dr. Matthews, just a moment. Thanks for the help, bud. Hey, wait. Is that snow? Who the hell tracks snow down here? December 30th, 1982. Dr. Chandra reporting. Serial number 9X47A. Project Freezing Rain. Entry 50. I am growing increasingly concerned about the life forms. 
This morning, they were able to somehow spontaneously generate small amounts of snow on the other side of the lab. We think they somehow took it from the water molecules in the air. When we tested the snow that they created, we found trace amounts of the life form inside it. We suspect that they can transmit themselves through the UHF bands. Dr. Matthews thinks they may be attempting to leave the lab. I strongly insist on expediting the installation of frequency jammers and insulation to the first week of the new year. Dr. Kendra. Yes? What is God? January 2nd, 1983. Dr. Chandra reporting serial number 9X. Look, is this really necessary? I told you, Chandra. Just put it all in the report. I don't have time to listen to every tiny little thing that's concerning you about this project. Dr. Simmons, this is not a tiny little thing. You've seen the same things I have. It's snow, Dr. Chandra. It's not dangerous. They're projecting it out everywhere in the lab. But it hasn't been able to go past the lab now, has it? It's not just... It's not just that. Look, a few days ago, I got a question from them. What is God? I try to answer them, but they've been quiet until this morning. Do you know what they finally said to me after all that time? It is we. Well, their opinions of themselves are about to take a rather big hit when all that snow melts. True, yes, but the snow can do other things too. What do you mean? After the message, I took a closer look at the snow near the incubation chamber. The shape and look of it were crude, but unmistakable. It was my face, Dr. Simmons. They were imitating my face in the snow. What are you trying to say, that these things are dangerous? Yes, yes, damn it. I'm saying that these things want to be us. Dr. Kendra, you will be like us. What the hell does it mean by... This... This is way past my pay grade. Fuck the blizzard. I'm getting out of this town. I'm going for help. I'll take the camera with me. Might have some evidence to prove this is all real. <coughs> Darcy! I hope your car's got gas. Mine's almost out. Help me pack this up and I'll explain everything on the way. You're not gonna believe this, but some weird shit was happening at Scott's Manor. I don't think your brother was directly involved, but... Well, there's no way to say this, but, but I think... Darcy? Darcy, why are you just standing there? Thanks for the help, bud. Thanks for the help, bud. Shit! This is William Ferris, coming to you from Channel 83's Weather Forecast Center. We're sorry to interrupt Dusty Harp's history of jazz, but the state of Minnesota has officially declared a severe weather warning to the following counties. Do not attempt to leave your current location. The blizzard's intensity is harsh, and the temperature is expected to drop into the negatives. Snowplows and salting vehicles are currently working to clear the roads, and it's considered dangerous to attempt to drive in these conditions. We are expecting a whopping 20 inches of snow from this blizzard, and the less people there are on the roads, the easier it will be for emergency services to get around and do their jobs. Fawn Circle is expected to get hit particularly hard, so if you're not home already, please hole up in whatever shelter you can find and try to ride out the storm. Do not attempt to step outside tonight. We will return you to our regular programming in a moment, but we'll keep the weather warning display on the bottom of your screen until the current emergency is... We're sorry to interrupt. We're sorry to interrupt. Leave your current location. Step outside. We will return you to the snow. The storm is shelter. The storm is home. Step outside. Tonight, the storm is coming for you. You will be like us. left my tape recorder back at the office. 
Hopefully this thing has enough juice to last a bit for now. My car is completely buried in the snow and I have no idea where the hell I'm going now. Or how to get help. Just going to keep walking for as long as I can. Hopefully someone... Hopefully... Hopefully find someone out here. If I start randomly pounding on, on doors for help, they're, they're, they're not that likely. And frankly, it'll all sound crazy anyway. Just, just, just gotta keep moving. Holy shit. <laughs> oh. Okay. So. It's hard to express what my favorite kind of online project is. The one that starts good and just gets better to great. 
or the one that starts from admittedly laughable positions and then rises up and just pummels ass by the end. I guess the only critique I can give is that the the effect of Carl's face on a technical level could have been better but again the delivery the suddenness of it the shock of it was so strong that I don't even care because you got my jaw to drop <laughs> it's good when I shut up and just let things play anybody who's been watching nightline for a long time knows that when I am impressed I just let something play because I need the audience to understand the effect that drove me to leave an entire piece uninterrupted. Wow. (laughs) Okay, Linkar. All right, Lewis. That that was excellent. You, 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 You pulled it the fuck out by the end, buddy. You pulled it off. You pulled it off. That was a bumpy beginning. And then just gradually, like, okay, getting up, dusting off the knees, and then genuinely making it work and continuing to impress and creep people out and scare them with, like somebody said, a banger ending. That back half fucking rolled, Squad Hawk said. Yes, yes, it did. I've had experiences in the theater where I call them like fourth quarter movies. I know it's like movies are acts, but it's if you ever see a football game where a team is just sucking ass until the fourth quarter and it's like, man, you you need to power hour this or you're going to suffer. And then they do it and they take the win gloriously so. And it's like a whole new team entered after after the break. That's what this felt like. Except it was the entire second half. It was the entire second half. It's like you came you came back from halftime and said, okay, you know what? Watch me. Watch me. And then you just went. That was that was very much I could tell the influences from old alien invasion horror films. Because that was giving, I know you said the thing from another world, and I get that, but in its actual presentation, not its plot, I was getting a lot of War of the Worlds. And that's really good. That's really good. I think if you had to do this project over again, Lewis, if you got, if you got the ability to take a time machine, go back and do this again. I would say that it would be a focus way more on the audio aspects. The technical graphical aspects that impress, I would leave and make sure are nailed and consistent. And just the audio elements that needed some tweaking, I would put the extra love into. That whole beginning Scott's Manor basement footage interruption... I would have just turned that into visual mush and given us audio instead. I would have killed that completely and just left it as audio mush. Um, And then certain moments of audio that followed, I would have given a little bit more love. I would have given that more editing. I would have given that more direction to try and really make it more believable or old Hollywood or old audio play because towards the end that's a lot of what we were getting the hard part and I I think I said this recently I think I, I said it in Mandela catalog update that's right the hard part about having elements and actors that just rock is that standing next to elements that don't it casts a darker shadow Brighter lights cast deeper shadows. Oh my god. Everybody telling Arcos that they they missed the best thing. (laughs) 
Uh, for ML4 saying, my husband explained why he preferred sci-fi to fantasy and actually converted me with this. With fantasy, the story faces an impossible foe but can delay their eventual fate. In sci-fi, they stand up despite the odds and have a chance to defeat the odds. And that's a lot of what we saw here. And you know what? I'm going to give props to the narrative build-up. If I have to keep hopping on anything that is, you should have done better or this should have taken more time to bake it would be the performative aspects but the narrative aspects here really work narratively we have a situation we understand of being strange of being of concern we have little bits of build up of getting what's going on and by the time we truly understand what the threat is it's that full oh no Oh no, they, they make it through the snow and there's about to be a super blizzard here and they're snowed in and they're part of the reason that people are snowed in and just, you all find out the elements of the horror way too late to do anything about this, you know, and just the reveals and the consistent understanding we gain of what the enemy is, what the threat is, why they are powerful how they have managed to spread is so impactful. And something as mundane as snow. Yes, that's the amazing thing. Something as mundane as snow. You already know that in certain scenarios it can be dangerous, yes. You don't think that it can harbor an entire system of hostile organisms that can turn you into gore piles. <laughs> Linkar says, the feedback is heard and appreciated, particularly on the, on the early bits. I'm very glad. I'm very glad. And you should be very proud. It's, there's a unique kind of pride that you've got to have, and that I especially have, of creators who, yeah, they start from, from places where it's like, ooh, that was rough, kid. But by the end, they kick ass. That just shows. That's, that's the proof in, in the entire body of a single work of, it doesn't matter if you start kind of okay or just with elements that are broken. If by the end you soar because you have just proven your ability. Aiden Elliott said, I love that. Um, while Local 58 is an obvious comparison to this, the War of the Worlds audio drama and Twilight Zone come to mind conceptually. And that's presented in analog horror form. It's super refreshing. Full agree on that. Full agree on that. Linkara says, analog horror for me has two big elements that I wanted reflected here. Hyperdiegesis, wherein there's a larger story at play than what we're seeing, and I kind of view it as an epistolary novel like Dracula, taking disparate elements from different sources, letters, diaries, etc., and those, and telling a narrative from it. Yeah, which is something that I really love about unfiction. And what is a major driver of ARGs is that there are so many different elements thrown into the pot in order to drive a narrative and weave it through things and thread a story together. Squad Hawk, you got it right. Sticking the landing means more than a banger opening. Looking at a few series you've featured, Nightmite. Yeah, because it's right. <laughs> uh, what did Kazi Armada say? Let's see. Damn good margarita. Only with Nick's permission. Um... Hey, you mentioned a DVD of Nick's Cool Mind linking it. Oh, yeah. Let me go ahead and, and grab that quick. Actually, what am I doing? It should be right through here. Johnson, you're fired. Purchase the DVD here. Holy shit, what a cover. Wow. Who did you get to to Anna to illustrate that? Who did you get to illustrate that? That is phenomenal. Here's the link, everybody. I'm dropping in chat. That is gorgeous. That's poster worthy. <laughs> wow. Only 15 bucks? That's pretty damn good. Hey, can you help me with this, says the Skeleton Man? 
And by the way, I promise in time I'll go ahead and, and have the thing where your chat is on the screen. It's just that for this, it was it wouldn't have worked very well. I don't think it would have been too disrupted. And uh, also, I just uh, I was not about to take the time to to go through the steps of implementing that. <laughs> Scotch. Thank you. Thank you, Linkar. Link to Scotch's Twitter, Scotch Draws. Followed by by May and Alan Resnick. Two others. Ben O'Brien and Pantheon Books. What are two what are two members of Wham City Comedy doing following this artist, I wonder? Huh. <laughs> Oh, and Spike of Lackadaisy. Okay. A story by H. Bomber guy. Wow. Okay. So, Scutch Draws. Yeah, phenomenal for sure. <laughs> Joseph Para. Yeah, I've seen the Lackadaisy trailer. But yeah, wow. Scotch draws. Actually, what the hell am I doing? Give me a second. There, followed. <laughs> Big time followed. Wow. Yeah, and apparently the DVD, as Lewis said, will have additional content, which is cool. Yeah, you know, that's... You really pulled it off at the end. Um, and I've got to give so much, so much praise to the editing. Again, I had headphones on and I could feel the additional touches and care for the audio work. I could hear them. I could hear it moving around me. <laughs> Cat Daddy seal of approval. And if Kitty said, yeah, you do. You, you get, you get the big paw print. <laughs> you do. You get the seal of approval. Oh, you, you did email me. Yeah, no, I'd love to receive a copy. I need to open a I need to open a post office box. I need to get a PO box open again. But uh yeah, no, I'll I'll happily receive one, thank you. I'd be delighted to. I'll put it on the I'll put it on the shelf where I've got a whole bunch of uh my memorabilia from over the years of, of doing nightmine stuff. <laughs> You can go right up there with uh, my copy of Antrim and such. Kazi Armada said, I've said this a handful of times, but I'm going to say it again. I want more of this from you, Linkara. This is fantastic, and what comes next could be fantastic and horrifying. Absolutely fucking yes. Absolutely yes. Lewis, you've been in the game too long to, to not keep trying to expand and spread your wings like this i know and a lot of people do know that yes there's a history of trying projects especially filmic projects but this has shown your ability to produce things of quality things of caliber and more so it expresses what your strengths are here you have a strength of storytelling you have a strength of technicals when it comes to say the graphics um the editing room stuff there is a need to increase skill set when it comes to actual I'm holding the camera and I'm setting up shots kind of stuff and a little bit more direction when it comes to voice actors and voice direction. However, your ability is there and your ability to choose strong voice actors and assign them the right roles is very, very evident here. You have what it takes to keep making robust projects and stuff that is significantly better than this. You know, this this is an immediate start to a project that is solid from beginning to end because it was bumpy at the start. And, you know, it did have its moments of mm, if I if I could have picked on this, I would pick on this. But this is the proof of do you have what it takes? Yes, you fucking do. Linkar is saying, thanks so much. I have ideas for a sequel to this, but some of my ideas are beyond what I can currently do. Plus, much as I want to continue the story, I do fear the I'm only capable of doing more of this and not other stuff. A lot of people, when they do horror stories, <laughs> do see sequel opportunities. Even if you do have ideas for a sequel, I would go after something else that's that's pulling on you. 
I would go after something else that's pulling on your attention. <laughs> Tazin says, Nick wants you to sign up for his Patreon consultation tier. He doesn't need it. He doesn't need it. If this if this tonight was enough for direction and, and commentary, then so be it. And I guess the only other thing I would say is um I know with your work and with this that you pulled in a lot of contacts and a lot of friends who were able to jump in and provide stuff. When you are getting really serious about this kind of stuff, friends are always willing to help. Friends are lovely. But sometimes there are those who are just better suited to the task of what you need. And that is never an insult to the friends or contacts you have made. That is just a fact of life of, I have a need to serve the art. This person is fantastic, but they are not the fit. And sometimes if you develop things and it just doesn't fit into the grander picture, you have to be the servant of the art and just say, this does not work. I'm sorry, thank you for helping me out with this, but it can't go into the final cut. I gotta put it aside. Like that opening live action segment from the basement of the manor. That I would have say, I would have looked at and said, you know what? I gotta I've gotta crush this into just audio factor because visually it's not working. You know, and and people you work with who you are collaborators with, they will understand that. If they have the maturity that you need for a project for collaboration, they will understand it and they will respect it. So keep that in mind going forward is that while everybody you know might be willing to help with something, think about the needs of the project. So. <laughs> wow. This was an amazing way to open streaming. I am very happy. So thank you to everybody who's tuned in tonight. Uh, no, Kaz, you are not getting Fortnite gaming anytime soon. <laughs> no. This was a banger of a stream. I am delighted. I am absolutely delighted. Thank you to everybody who dropped in and came by. Thanks to everybody who piped up and made their, their presence known. Thank you all for following. Thank you for everything. I am going to continue streaming. Um as a regular thing over here on Twitch, because you know what? Everybody I know is over here. I should have started this about two years ago. I'm so behind the ball that it's ridiculous. So we're going to keep this going and uh, just see how quick we can make affiliate, make partner, and just make this an awesome regular thing with as many of the bells and whistles that you expect of Twitch streaming on the, reg on the regular as you can expect. And this will be a regular component of me streaming. I'm not just going to do fun horror games or stuff that seems relevant to me. We are going to consistently have live night mind nights like this. Whether it's a project that is out there that I know of, or we are just going into the night mind index to see something that's not been covered or that is new and just exploring that catalog. But that is the plan here, is that it's not just going to be YouTuber hangs out with some games and goes over some silly stuff. This is, <laughs> this is going to be a regular outlet for the kind of content that you expect that simply just does not fit for regular channel operation and allows me, frankly, more time to work on things to go on the main channel instead of being kind of a production factory like I was last year. I got a lot done last year, but I will not lie to you, it was fucking painful at times. Shirtless rig when? Uh, I don't know, I'll make it a sub goal when I earn subs. <laughs> I'm not going full lewd tuber like you, like you see in hashtags, but uh, hey, I, I, know, I know what some people enjoy. But yes, we will go ahead and cap this off for tonight. Thank you all for coming by. Lankara, thank you so much for, for sitting by through the criticism, the ribs, the praise, uh, the oohs, and the ahs. By the end of it, yes, you get a ringing endorsement. This is an excellent case study for a lot of people and how certain things are done. And especially where it doesn't really matter where you start, by the end, you can win this game and win over the crowd. 
Nagar says, thank you again for everything. Been a fan of yours for the last year or two. Thank you very much. And, and a toast to an elder statesman of YouTube. Somebody who was a banner carrier from the early days and has not stopped and evolved with the times. Bless you. All right, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and call it here. I have no idea if I'm going to pick up tomorrow. But soon, we do need to pick up our playthrough of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. I want to finish that. I really do. <laughs> so, I'll catch you soon. All right, everybody? Thank you so much for joining me in the dark again this evening. I have been Nick Nocturne. Sleep tight, everybody.